It's simple. So the first one is page 18. It's the first one there. Uh, uh, you looked at three vectors uh, like this. Vector A, which is 1, negative 2, 3, and 2. Four-dimensional vector, you look at the vector B, which is 0, 4, 1, 2. Yes. Uh, actually, you look at the vector X also, which is 3, 0, 5, 6. And the question, very simple question, which says, do we know that do we know that the X belongs to the span of these two given vectors A and B? Uh, in principle, this is a very simple question, which involves, like, you, you have to solve system of linear equations, and this time we can just, we don't even have to solve it. We, all we have to do, we have to see the corresponding row echelon form. So, first, when you do this question, when you look at such question, uh, you first you have to recall what the span was, and the span is, if you remember, it's something like this. We have to see that there is two numbers, real numbers, with the property that vector x is the linear combination of the A and B with these two numbers. And this, effectively, if you replace this X, if you replace this A and you replace this B with the expressions for, the, for these three vectors, if you replace A with this, if you replace B with this, and X with this. In fact, for the first, for in, the, in the first example here, I did this. Look at this. But I did it like I, I put the right-hand side first. So I, I made my right-hand side here. Left-hand side, look at this for the, look at the replacement. So lambda times the vector a, and now I replace the vector a with the components of the vector a, 1, negative 2, 3, and 2. Mu times the components of the vector b, 0, 4, 1, and 2. And then now the right-hand side, which was the left-hand side before, vector x, the components of that is 0, 5, and 6. So the question is, this question mark, in order to answer the whether we have this whether we have this true or not, we have to see if we can produce two numbers, which makes this happening, which effectively is just we have to solve the system of linear equations. We don't see the system yet, but I mean, like, I haven't put the system in front of you, but I'm sure most of you already see the system. The system will come up. If I do per component, if, you, if I equate the left-hand side to the right-hand side in per component way, so I will end up with four different equations with two unknowns. Once in a lifetime, I, I'll, I will do that. You will see actually in a sec that it's unnecessary step in general. So if you're saving time and if you're rushing for the for the answer, you can skip so you can skip this step. But once I will do that. If I do this per component equating step, I will take that. the first component on the left hand side is just lambda. Here it is. The first component on the right hand side is three. Zero will vanish mu. Second component is negative two lambda plus four mu equals zero. That's the second component. If I create the second component left hand side, the second component on the right hand side. Third component is 3 lambda plus single mu equal 5. And the last one is 2 lambda 2 mu equal 6. So you're looking at this system of linear equations now in the per component form. And again, the question stays the same. We have to see if we have a solution to this system. Before we, did, before we discovered with you the raw echelon form approach, you could have done this in some arbitrarily chosen way, the way you feel, if you feel like more suitable to your taste. Uh, but, but now we can do everything with the raw echelon form. Here you might probably, even, even for this example, you might probably find it's not so, uh, this, it might not be the 100% optimal way because actually the first equation already suggests lambda must be free. Uh, but still, I will do this with the raw echelon form because we have to practice this. And th th there will be further examples further on, which you cannot do as easy with the, with the ad hoc approach. So when you do this, when you approach this with the raw echelon form, you have to extract the augmented matrix of a system. You remember the augmented matrix is the one which carries the coefficients of the unknowns on the one side and the right-hand side. And the, and the numbers on the right-hand side will be the second part of your augmented matrix. If I extract the matrix, here it is. So this is the this is the coefficients of these are the coefficients of lambda 1 negative 2 3 and 2. These are the coefficients of mu which is 0 in the first equation 4 1 and 2. Now on the other side of the bar you have your right hand side 3 
zero, five, and six. <coughs> yes, everything, everything seems to, everything seems to be fine. Now, the next step in the row echelon form approach says we have to convert this to reduce uh, to the row echelon form with the help of the elementary row operations. Like I mentioned last time, I'm not going to do it here. I'll just refer you to the solution helper. This matrix is there. This matrix is there. So if I just if I put the dots here, which conceal the this the the, the, the smart node, wisely chosen set of elementary row operations, which take this matrix to row echelon form. The resulting row echelon form will be this one. This one. Uh, the reference for that, yeah. So. We go to the row echelon form, and in the solution helper, this is a problem six in solution helper, which gives you step by step explanation what kind of row operations you have to do. Although I encourage you to, before you look at that, try to do it yourself, try to figure out and do it yourself. It's not really big, it's not really difficult, rather than looking directly quickly into the problem in the solution helper. So this will be my row echelon form, and now by looking at this row echelon form, we can see, we can give the answer whether we have solution or we do not have a solution. We have a general criterion last time, which give us the answer by just assessing how many leading columns we have and where these leading columns are, right? Now, in this, in this, if, if, if you look at this row echelon form, which is in fact reduced row echelon form because we have unities and we have zero here, but it's not really relevant much, what your, what your assessment will be? Do we have solution or we do not have solutions? We don't have, thank you very much, we don't have solutions because, because we have a leading column on the right-hand side. And the answer to this question is as simple as just we, the X doesn't belong to the span of A and B. I will, make, I, will make, I will make one extra comment in relation to this. Is the comment is that actually this step, this step, writing the system of equations, especially if you don't carry, look at this. In this solution, we didn't really care for the solution itself. If, for instance, if there was a solution, it ended up that we don't have a solution. But if it was a solution, we didn't need that solution, right? All we need to know is that if there is one or not. If there is one, we have something in span. If there is, if, if there is no one, we don't have it in span. We don't care for the exact numerical value of that solution. That's why, actually, it's another point in favor of row echelon form, because row echelon form doesn't, doesn't give you the solution. It just gives you the, I mean, you can pull out the solution from that if you do back substitution. but some, the, 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 row, the, uh, the row echelon form itself doesn't really give you the solution, it just gives you the answer. There is a solution or there's no solution. And that's what exactly we need here. We just, we, we, just, we just need to know, do we have a solution or we don't have a solution? So what I'm saying, actually, what, I, what, what I'm trying to say is that this step, actually, it was a completely unnecessary step. We don't have to, next time, if we, if we see something like this, we don't have to write these equations. In fact, if you look at this augmented matrix, you, can, you could see this matrix even here. All I did, I just took the components of this A vector and I put it as the first column of my matrix. I took the components of my B vector and I put it as a second column of my matrix. I took my, well, it's in, in system of equations, it's a right-hand side. Here it was on the left-hand side. I took my right-hand side, this right-hand side, and put it as a, as a part of the right-hand side of my augmented matrix. So next time, if I look at the vector this, this can, be, can be called a vector equation, right? Vector equations with two unknowns. The only difference from this system is just rather than, rather than having numerical coefficients, we have vector coefficients. So next time we look at the vector equation like this, I won't be doing this or this. I will jump right to the augmented matrix where I will fill this matrix with the vectors which present in my vector equation. So we will go right from here down to augmented matrix. 